Hey there everybody. Today is Tuesday, June 27th. Unless I'm wrong. There's always a chance I might be wrong. But um, we've got a little break in the rain. The ants don't seem to think that we're going to be getting much more at the moment. Um, so we're just kind of taking a moment and doing a quick little mow in a few spits. I'm putting that down as mulch, but um, some of the comfrey is ready to be cut back again too. So I figured I might as well make good on a promise to show you guys how I'm doing it. And uh, yeah, stick around. This comfy right here, obviously not really ready to go. Although we have a few on this side here that could. Um, these ones here were the leftovers that I left standing when I harvested the rest of this about a week ago. And so now that the rains are here and the warm temperatures are here, um, this is about three feet of regrowth in about a week, which is great. But all I'm gonna do is come in here, find my handful of leaves that are ready to go. I'm just gonna come in here And there we go. That's that. And now it's in place. And we're just gonna go around this to the other side here, where this stalk is. You can see it right there. So I'm gonna come in just above that little leaf that's poking out of it. And that's it. That one's good to go too. Now, obviously, if you're doing a whole clear of a bush, you're going to have a whole, whole lot more uh, in the way of green manure. So, let's take a look at this one. We have some that are pretty much past, but there are loads of other flowers on here that have not yet begun. And so... What I'd like to do is come in here and we're going to hold this branch out of the way. We're going to stick our foot in and just step these guys down. Just like this. We left them Going right around the Minarda. This branch is going to come back down. And now we have a whole bunch of coverage here. And what we'll do is bring these stalks over. And we'll step these down too to give a little bit more cover to this willow. And then the last of these guys right here can go next to it. Bam! So, we have a few stalks left up, but a ton of space for new shoots to come up. So, again, today is the 27th, and uh, I'll try to do like a follow-up in about a week and see where that's uh, gotten to. There's a few others that we're gonna do right in here. This one is putting out so, so, so many flowers, but it's also shading out some house caps. It is providing a nice bit of protection to this pawpaw. And uh, when we were doing the first round of the lawn trimming mulching, came over here and saw this beautiful little individual. And uh, yeah, so this right here is a new pawpaw growing from this right here. I'm not sure if it's due to uh, the freeze or due to the persistent browse that this particular tree gets, but they are a clonal forming uh, suckering tree 
So it is pretty enthusing to see a new shoot developing, which means that our, our plan for this space is kind of moving forward, as it were. So I'm going to take a little shot. This is what this space looks like right now. There's the pawpaw right there, the baby pawpaw right there, and these two mammoth comfries that are going to get chopped back. But I'm going to use two hands for this to uh, just speed it up, make it a little easier for myself. We'll come back in just a sec. That didn't take long at all. So all I've done, just like on the other one, is step things down around the plants that I'm looking to shelter and protect with it, and the ones that I'm looking to mulch with it. And so we have a few that are going around this pawpaw here, and this one here was split around. You can see the center of the crown right there. And this one was just spread around to take care of some of the grass that was popping up around this hazelnut here. Um, one reason that I do the step before uh, doing any cuts is that the stepping action, as long as I'm not severing this main stem here, these flowers will still have a chance to blossom and bloom and provide nectar and forage and things for all the tiny invertebrates and uh, animals that use the flowers. So. If I am just deliberate and step it down, um, this won't die off immediately, it won't rot down, it'll provide additional protection to the area that it's over before it dies back when I cut it. So we're getting multiple yields out of this in one fell swoop. Let's take a look at one more. So this particular comfrey is over one of our New Jersey teas and uh, one of the Nanking cherries right here that you can see just behind it. And this guy is going gangbusters. I love it. I love to see it. I'm super enthused by it. Underneath it, we have a few sprigs of grasses popping up. Um, the strawberries, I don't mind. And on the other side here, we have a little patch of Good King Henry and some lemon balm and some more grasses popping up. So what we're going to do same as before, we're just going to come in here and step them over. Just give that little bit of protection to the good King Henry. Step it down and around this cherry. I'm sure you guys can hear that little crunch. That's okay, that's what we're looking for. Because when you hear that crunch, it means that you've broken the stem, so it's not gonna stand back up on you, which means that this will continue to do its thing. But now there's all this space, and this is a ton of coverage that will still provide forage for the bees and for the butterflies, but it'll open up a little bit more sunlight to this guy. It'll bring a little bit more light to the hazelnut. And when we do sever them once the new growth is coming in, we can feed them around this New Jersey tea or over to the bed that has gotten a little wild or, or, or wherever. So that's our comfrey management at this time. You can see another one where I severed it back about a week ago and left a few. Now this is going. So we'll probably, once this flowers a bit more fully, uh, we'll probably step it down and cover that. And we'll just keep on going. But for now, I have a few more things to take care of. Hope y'all are well. Until next time, thanks for watching. Happy planting.